Are you planning a trip to South Africa? Here's everything you need to know before you go. Hey, it's Phoebe with Matt Behind the Camera. And on this channel, we share with you all our tips and experiences to help you travel well. South Africa is the southernmost country in Africa. It is home to over 60 million people and three capital cities, Cape Town, Pretoria, and Bonfontein. It is famous for its incredible scenery, gorgeous coastline, abundant animal life, and fantastic food. As Aussies, we didn't need a visa to visit South Africa for up to 90 days, but it's a really good idea to check the official government website before you go to make sure you're up on your visa requirements. There are 11 official languages and English is one of them. So as long as you speak enough English to get by, you should be fine. Now we found the locals love to involve us in the local language. Um, one of our amazing local Local guides, she was getting us involved in the term yebo. <laughs> and every time we would agree with her or we would taste some great food, she'd be like, How is it? We'd be like, Yebo. Now, there are some really cute South Africanisms to look out for. Just now is sort of like, I'm coming to your house or I'm leaving just now. When did you leave just now? That's like sort of whenever I get around to it, no rush. Now now is immediately. I'm coming to pick you up now now. They say shame, and that might be if you do something cute, maybe see a cute little granny or you say something sweet, they might be like, oh, shame. It's like a really cute sort of an empathy thing. It's the same with is it. That can be like an expression, sort of like you might tell a story and be like, oh, I got this on sale for $5.99. They'll be like, is it? <laughs> Don't worry, they're not questioning you like, is it? Another one I love is they call their traffic lights robots, which is so cute. And one to keep your ear out for is lekker. That means good. The local currency is the South African Rand. Now to help us figure everything out while we were there, I have the free app XE currency downloaded to my phone and I have South African Rand downloaded so I can use it offline. South Africa seasons are the same as they are for us in Australia and New Zealand. You have your colder months in the middle of the year and your warmer months at the end and the start of the year. Now we have visited twice, once in May and once in July, and we slightly preferred our May visit just because it was a little bit warmer. And typically May to September is gonna be your peak time for spotting great animals. Both times we visited and all the places we have visited, we have had a local guide and or driver with us. And I highly recommend you do the same. You learn and you experience so much more and you feel so much more connected. So we have had a few different guides and I'm gonna make sure we list the contact details for every single guide we've had in the comments below or the description below. So check that out. And if you do book them, let them know that we sent you because they will absolutely love that. Before our first visit to South Africa, we were really nervous about safety. We'd heard a lot of stories. We'd seen a lot of things. And so we were very scared. Once we got there and we were with our guides and we started going out and listening to them and having our own experiences, we started to relax. The second time we visited, we had no worries whatsoever because we knew what to expect and we knew what to do. All I can do with you is share my personal experience and it has been nothing but positive. And that's because we've always had a guide or a driver with us and we have listened to them and we haven't done things that we wouldn't do when we travel anyway, like walk off in the middle of the night, get raging drunk. I think just exercise that common sense approach, listen to your guides and follow those basic safety things. And hopefully your experience will be just as wonderful as ours was. We've been to South Africa twice and on both visits, we went for around seven to nine days and managed to do a safari, a visit to Cape Town and Johannesburg. But South Africa is huge and those are only three places you can visit. We've done two safaris on our trips to South Africa and each one offered something different. Our first one was mind blowing. We flew from Cape Town to Skakuza Airport to do a stay with Lion Sands River Lodge. Now the game drives took place on the Sabi Sands Game Reserve, which is right next to the Kruger National Park. Park. The key thing to note about this area is it's free range. <laughs> it is absolutely huge. It is national park. I was nervous that we wouldn't see all the animals. We wouldn't see the big five. Within the first day, we'd seen so many of them. It wasn't even funny. So if you're worried, don't be. Chances are you'll see everything. Now, Lion Sands River Lodge is incredibly luxurious. The service is second to none. The accommodation is stunning. The food is spectacular. I cannot recommend it highly enough. And I'm so glad that was our first safari experience experience because it lived up to everything I had ever wanted it to be. Our second experience was also amazing. <laughs> For this one, we flew from Johannesburg to Hotspruit and from there we were picked up by the guys from Kapama Buffalo Camp on the Kapama Private Game Reserve. So the key thing here is it is fenced and all of the animals are contained within it. 
Don't worry, don't picture something small. It is an absolutely huge area. Now, Kapama, again, everything is inclusive. The staff are fantastic. The grounds are gorgeous. The accommodation here is these old world, luxurious safari tents, and they have this gorgeous bathtub. Either one, you would be so happy with them. They're amazing experiences. So we'll have those both linked below for you. If you are going in that May to September peak period, make sure you pack lots of layers. We found it to be very cold in the early mornings and the late evenings when we're on our game drives. A couple of other things you might want to bring with you. Make sure you've got plenty of sunscreen, maybe a really good hat you can jam on your head and stick on there if the sun's going to be out so that it doesn't go flying off when you drive. And most importantly, guys, I want to talk about safety because this is a question I get asked a lot. Are the animals AKA the lion's gonna launch at you when you come up to them in the car. No, they're not, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I was really scared too, but the guides explained to us that these animals grow up around the cars and the people, they get used to seeing it. Whatever they tell you to do, just listen and you will be totally fine. We had two vastly different experiences when we visited Cape Town. The first time, I guess because it was our first time, we were more focused on the history of Cape Town, the history of South Africa, and it was also raining. The second time we went, it was suns out. It was so fun. Everyone was feeling summery and happy and outdoorsy, and it just changed the whole energy for us. With that great weather, we were able to explore the coastline more. We were able to go out and do more day trips, and it gave us a chance to really experience Cape Town properly. And one of the things that blew me away about Cape Town was how beautiful the coastline and the scenery is, how gorgeous the people are, and how delicious the food is. Prepare yourself to eat a ton of good food. It is just so good. Again, our first visit to Joburg was focused more on the history side of it. And when we came back a second time, we were able to go, all right, we've seen the history. We understand it. Let's just have a really great time. If you are going to Joburg, expect it to be a really big city. You're going to have to drive a fair bit to get to lots of different places. My favorite place to go in Joburg is Soweto, and you should absolutely go there with a local guide. We got to do an awesome tour uh, with our guide. You know, she took us to Nelson Mandela's house and then we tried traditional African food. It was so tasty. And then we got to kind of walk around the streets and visit some of the local shabines or local bars. And that for me is the heart of Joburg, that connection and laughing with the locals and just getting to know them and having a great time. Um, there are so many different cuisines to try. I have to insist that you find somebody who can hook you up with some local African food. There were so many things I got to try in Soweto that I had never tried before. And it was delicious. You know, we got to see bunny chow being made and we got to see not eat but see Mahodo Mondays which is where they take the unfavorable cuts of meat like tripe and trotters and feet and claws and snouts and hinds and all kinds of things and they turn that into delicious dishes. Um, I didn't eat it but I had a great time watching other people get stuck into it and of course South Africa is famous for biltong, great beer, Rai, which is their answer to a barbecue, but it's done with like this special like coals and wood and stuff that gives the meat this really amazing flavor. And of course, Pinotage, incredible wine. So we combined all of that. We did a tour with the guys at Kif and Combi Tours. Uh, they took us on a beer and biltong tour. It was epic. Like I said, both times we visited in May and July and it's typically being cooler. During the daytime, I found myself wearing summer dresses and sandals, but once that sun started to go down, I really needed to bundle up a little bit, put a jacket on, rug up, get a little warmer. So I kind of packed a mix of everything. I had some hiking boots, jeans, jumpers, and jackets, especially for the safari portion. And then for Cape Town and Joburg, I had more summer dresses or long dresses with things I could put over my shoulders. So layers is really gonna be your best friend. And as always, make sure you are sun safe. You wanna have your sunscreen, your hat. I recommend you pack some really comfortable shoes because you're gonna be on your feet all day and it's going to be worth it because it's awesome. So if you want to see more guides from our adventures, we filmed a whole bunch from both trips. You can check those out here on YouTube. We will have them linked in the description below for you. And if you found this video useful at all, you could use the super thanks feature, or you can simply book your accommodation, activities, anything using our affiliate links, and we will earn a small commission at no extra cost for you. Now with that, that brings this week's episode to a close. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you don't already, be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode below and say hello in the comments below. <laughs> Did I say it twice? <laughs> I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you with a brand new episode next week. Love ya. Yeah, you better.